at the high post, shot put up and scored by Ebony Tullis. And Cottomo Valley leads it 11 to two. Ebony Tullis with a good game so far. He's got a couple of field goals, two from the free throw line, he's got six. Dresic again from outside, no good. Gets his own rebound, goes in for the little scoop shot, no good. Boards are cleaned by Raquella. He is fouled in the backcourt by Scott Dresic. There are a lot of Cottomo Valley fans here. We have a Ferndale substitution. Jeff Dunbar in and checking out will be George Grove. Gary Lupek told me before the game that he actually has nine starters. He said he uh, rotates nine players on a pretty regular basis. This is Colton Ball across the line to Tullis. Step inside the foul line. He shoots a difficult shot. No good. Tip in. Going to be credited, I believe, to Brian Raquella. Five. Left corner back to Dunbar at the wing. Back into the left corner. Shot up and no good by Roth. And again, Ferndale limited to one. Kent to Tullis. He'll have to bring it back outside. Shot is no good by Aaron Coleman, but we have another Ferndale foul. Jeff Dunbar committing the foul. Pretty, uh, pretty obvious on that one. First one on Dunbar and to the line for Conomo Valley will be Aaron Coleman, the 6'2 sophomore. Coleman at the line for the first time tonight. In and out, no good. Conomo Valley leading 13-2 here in the first period. Blue Jays with only two wins this season, but they look impressive so far going up 13-2 with 4.29 in the first period remaining. Second shot, no good. Rebound kicked out of bounds, and it'll be Ferndale's ball. And, Scott, this has been a very physical game in the early going here. Yeah, these are these are guys who are not playing like an A school, are they? They've seen each other before. Lushko across the line to Dunbar. Dunbar back outside to Lushko, back to Dunbar again. Ferndale being patient, they want to set some plays. On the right wing is Dressig, still about 25 feet from the basketball. Tipped out of his hands, he'll get it back. Underneath, nice pass. Good assist by Dunbar into Matt Schmidt for the basket. It's been all up and down. Ferndale now throwing some full court pressure at Conoma Valley. Four, five, six, and they make the steal off the full court press. And banging to the basket was Matt Schmidt. His shot's no good. Lushko's rebound attempt no good, but he's fouled. It is physical and furious underneath. This one is going to go against Conoma Valley. Well, you get a couple of teams that play each other a few times every season, and they know each other inside and out. You can expect the, expect the physical brand, the play that we're seeing in the early going here. Matt Lesko goes to the line. First one is no good, and Lesko is still scoreless. Really impressive when you look at the uh, season and the career statistics for Lesko. He is only a junior, which makes his numbers all the more unbelievable. Second shot is good, and it's 13 to five. And first point, Conomo Valley lead. First point of the night for Lusco. And again, a Ferndale full court press. They will try to trap at the mid-court stripe, and that's gonna be called a blocking foul on Matt Schmidt. Scott, we are accustomed to uh, the Cambria County War Memorial, and uh, we're pretty well removed from the crowd, so we are right with the crowd, right behind the cheerleaders, about uh, 15, 20 feet from the floor, and it is noisy here. Yes, it is. Panama Valley on the inbound pass to Kultenbaugh. On the left wing to Sean Heinken in for the first time. Ball stolen by Ferndale. Outlet pass comes to Dunbar. Gets in for the layup too strong. <laughs> Rebound by Lushko, and he gets creamed. Lushko will go to the line to shoot two. Panama Valley knows if they can slow down Lushko, they uh, they got a shot at winning this thing. He's uh, obviously a big, big part of their offense. There have been nights where he has scored more points than the rest of the team put together. Lushko to the line to shoot two. First one is up and good. He's one for two from the line. Now two for three. 
Matt Lushko with already uh, approaching 1,300 career points, and he's got another year to go. He's three for four from the charity strike. I believe you're giving him a couple extra. I think he's just a little over 1,000. Connemaw Valley with a great break up the floor. Gets the ball knocked out of bounds, saving an easy layup for Aaron Coleman. No, maybe you are right, Chuck. I guess you are right. It was 1,000 the uh, crack early in the season, wasn't it? I, I do believe that back. So. From the left corner, Sean Heinkin kicks it off to the high post. Difficult shot is good by Ebony Tullis. Ebony Tullis with a good game tonight. He's got eight already. Rick Roth down the court for Ferndale. We'll leave it for Dunbar on the outside. Panama Valley playing tough defense when Ferndale gets near the basket. From the right wing, this is Roth. His shot is no good. Rebound controlled by Ferndale, but stolen away by Tullis. Goes to the basket, shoots over Lesko, no good. Follow shot by Heinkin is blocked, and here comes Ferndale, one on three, and Scott Dressick will wait for some friends. Now he has the ball slip off his hands and out of bounds, and it'll come into Kanama Valley. Scott, even though Matt Lesko has not uh, racked up a lot of points tonight, I think the quality that uh, stands out most for Lesko in the early going here is quickness. Uh, he blocked that last shot, and on defense or offense, he's just so quick. Panama Valley now back to the offense with Heinkin. Bounce pass on the outside, out of bounds. He got the quick reflexes in basketball. That ought to be worth a couple points right there. And yes. it is for Lushko. Valley will inbound from the sideline. Goes back to the right corner where Sean Heinkin's shot is no good. Loose ball picked up by Valley. Another shot put up this time by Matt Hopt is no good. By rather Brian Riccala, and he has a foul on him, so Riccala will go to the line. Matt Lushko with the foul. 15-7 is our score. Conema Valley over Ferndale. We're down to a little over two minutes remaining in this first period. First free throw by the right-hander is good. And he's got eight points. And it has been uh, Raquella and uh, Tellus so far. Second free throw up and also good. Those two Blue Jays scoring uh, virtually all their team's points. Now again, Conor Valley throws up the full court press and again, Ferndale breaks it. Good job this time. They get about a 10-footer, but it's no good by Scott Dressick and Valley will give them only one chance. Heinkin on the outlet has the ball kicked out of bounds by Matt Lushko. It'll be Valley's ball back in in their own forecourt. Well, you know you're out of bounds here whenever you uh, land in someone's lap, right? I mean, the, the crowd and the cheerleaders right there on the floor are just a foot or so out of bounds. I can remember broadcasting games here, Chuck, when we were virtually in bounds. I can remember broadcasting games where we had the basketball, yes. Yeah. Shot by Tullis, partially blocked, and Ferndale gets the ball back. This is Lushko coming right to left across the line for Ferndale. And as you can see, they have this floor lined for everything except water polo. <laughs> Underneath shot by Schmidt, no good. Follow shot, no good, and a foul. Very physical game, a lot of intensity. These two teams have played each other often. They're Appalachian Conference opponents, and they know each other inside and out. Sean Heinkin gets the foul on Ferndale, down by a score of 17 to 7. With a minute 42 remaining in the first period, we'll go to the foul line. This is Rick Roth, a 6'2 junior. Rick Roth at the line, and he is one for two. One for one, rather. Two for two. Ferndale again showing pressure on the inbound pass, and they will steal the ball away. In goes Lesko to the hoop. It counts, and he got fouled. Basket does count. He gets the points. He gets fouled. And Scott, once again, quickness. He was just able to get up there and score the basket lightning quick. Lesko has uh, five points. I believe Brian Riccala got him. He is three for four from the line. Made his last three in a row, as a matter of fact. Make it four in a row. So Lusko's on a roll now at the free throw line, and again Ferndale going to throw the full court pressure at him. And it's broken very nicely by Kanawha Valley. And in for the layup goes Brian Riccala. When you can bust the press and go in that quickly, 
He's done a great job against the pressure. Double figures already for Brian Ricallo with 11. A double team Lushko at the timeline, but he gets the ball across the line into the hands of Rick Roth in the corner. Back to Lushko, three point attempt is up. And it was only a two point attempt. That is uh, two points, almost a three. Good looking shot from the corner near the baseline. Again, Ferndale with the pressure. And again, Conoma Valley beats it. Rakala goes once more to the hole. His shot is no good. Let's go, by and the way, the Yellow nine Jackets with so a quick far. rebound. Oh, there was a travel that nobody noticed. Over to Schmidt. Back on the right wing to Dunbar. Shot inside is no good, and Conoma Valley will come the other way as we're down to 40 seconds left in the opening period. Valley leading 19 to 14. Is Sean Heinken back out on top to Goran Kaltenbaugh. Valley looks like they may go for the last shot of the period. Smith back outside to Kaltenbaugh. There's only one clock, and that is behind the guards, so to see it, they have to turn around the other way. Kind of an unusual situation where you do not have a clock at the basket you're facing. Of course, in the second half, it works just the opposite. Down to eight, seven, six, and now they've got to move the offense very quickly. We've got a whistle and a three-second violation. With three Aaron, seconds remaining on the clock, 1914, Panama Valley. Aaron Coleman got caught in the yellow paint. They get the shot away before the buzzer, but it's going to be a little bit late as the tip-in came after the horn. So we have played one period here at Ferndale Area High School. And after one, the score is Conoma Valley 19 and Ferndale 14. at Ferndale Area High School. Panama Valley 19, Ferndale 14 as we get ready for the second quarter. It'll be Panama Valley in bounding with a five point lead. And it comes into Sean Heinken, out of Gumby and he traveled as he had nowhere to go in the paint. Ebony Tullis, the six foot senior, tried to dribble where he had no room. Ferndale was way down early. They have cut it to five and they have looked good over about the last four minutes of the first period. Across the line to Dunbar. Three points and then some from the outside by Scott Gresick. Write it down. And coming up the other way, facing pressure once again, Conoma Valley. Almost misplays it. It was tipped out of bounds by Ferndale. Good outside shot from Dressick that time to get Conoma Valley within two points of a tie ball game. Or to get Ferndale within two points of a tie ball game. It's the Blue Jays leading 19-17. Three pointer by Kaltenbaugh is off the mark. Rebound goes out of bounds and it'll be Conoma Valley's ball back in. I'm Scott McLeod with Chuck Bender. Glad you've joined us on Friday night Cablevision Scholastic Basketball. Inbound pass stolen by Lushko. What great hands and what a super pass. Teammate dropped it but picking up the loose ball is Dressing. And he makes the basket to tie the ball game. The first time Ferndale has been tied all night, and they have not been ahead. And now Panama Valley breaks the pressure. Good pass, layup, and a score by Aaron Coleman, the 6'2 sophomore. Scott Dressick's uh, points uh, to tie the ball game in 19. He has seven tonight. Here's Lushko in the left corner. Fade away, too strong. Rebound, Panama Valley. Colton Ball will leave it for, will bring it across the line and leave it for somebody. There on the right wing is Rick Kella. Into the right, Colin to Kent. Inside the paint, difficult fadeaway shot is good by Aaron Coleman. Aaron Coleman, four points for good the looking Blue Jays. Shot. Good looking shot. Ferndale the other way, Dressick in the right corner finds the open Schmidt about a 10 foot or too strong. Panama Valley will give the Jackets just one chance. The outlet pass to Heinken across the timeline is bounce pass. Battered out of bounds by a hustling Lushko. Boy, Lushko is just so quick. We've talked about that a couple of times, but it really is a factor. Substitution for Valley, Bobby Smith, the 5'11 sophomore, will come in for the first time. 
And he will run the team, so the sophomore Smith is going to be the guard out here. Bounce pass by Tullus, kicked out of bounds and rejected by the Jackets. Connemaw Valley will inbound from their own side court. Tullus to the left wing, and Bobby Smith back on top to Tullus. Kaltenbaugh drives into the paint, difficult shot, good. It's a pretty impressive maneuvering through the uh, maze there for Kaltenbaugh as he was able to get the points. From the right outside shot by Kahnema, uh, by Ferndale, Scott Dressick. And again, full court pressure. This time, Valley's going to bust it after a deflection. Good pass inside the paint, and the easy basket put up by Aaron Coleman. Scott Dressick has nine points. Kurt Lushko already in double figures. Ferndale busts the press. Shot by Roth is partially blocked, and a whistle on the following shot. Aaron Coleman has gotten a quick six points here in the second period. Keep in mind this ball game was tied at 19 about a minute ago. Panama Valley is going to take a timeout. And on that call timeout, that'll give us an opportunity to direct your attention to the wall across from us, where Ferndale has some banners of some of the accomplishments they have made in the field of sports. The one on the left uh, that we have just passed, the Appalachian Conference wrestling champs for junior high and wrestling champs in 83, 84, and 85. Then the uh, Ferndale Stinger and the American flag. The next one says girls basketball state silver medalist in 1988. Girls basketball Appalachian Conference champs in 87, 88, and 89. Girls basketball South Cambria champs in 77, 78, and 89. Scott, we had an opportunity to do a lot of those, uh, those games of uh, the girls basketball team in those years, the Appalachian Conference playoff games. Those were the teams of May Beth Shawls, who of course now plays college basketball. But she was outstanding, and uh, she's a big reason why those banners are up there. And the other two were for the Girls Basketball District 6 title in 89 and the PIAA Class A Girls Basketball Western Championship back in 1988. Those were both in 88. Impressive, to say the least. Yes. A school that obviously takes a lot of pride in their sports accomplishments. And they've done well in the decade of the 80s. Matt Schmidt now at the line to shoot two for Ferndale. First one is good, 27-22 is the score. Panama Valley leads by five. Matt Schmidt with three points. This is first time at the line tonight. Second shot by Schmidt, he rims the basket, but we've got a whistle and a lane violation. So he's gonna get an NBA call here, three to make two. 5.36 remaining in the first half. Panama Valley 27, Ferndale 22. Panama Valley led uh, very quickly by about seven or eight points, but Ferndale able to catch up and tie it at 19. Blue Jays now back in the lead by five. Panama Valley gets the inbound pass again, and here comes the full court pressure. It's broken nicely. Smith across the line. His pass nearly goes out of bounds. Saved nicely by Tullis, and now his outlet pass is stolen by Jeff Dunbar. Dunbar heads the other way for Ferndale. Kicks it off to his right, and Scott Dressing. Underneath, the pass intended for Rick Roth is knocked out of bounds. Roth, the last one to touch it. These two teams playing like uh, this thing is for a state championship. A lot of intensity here. Two teams that know each other well. On the outside, Colton Ball. Shot goes up no good. Rebound off the wall, out of bounds. Jump ball, the arrow favors Ferndale. Yellow Jackets, four and six. Gary Lupak's Blue Jays, two and seven. This is one of the places where the crowd gets up close and personal as you're very, very close to the action. This is Lushko, in and out, no good. Rebound out of bounds, off the hands of Bobby Smith, so Ferndale will inbound under their own basket. 4.51 in the second quarter. Thanks for joining us on Cablevision Channel 9 for high school basketball, Appalachian Conference basketball. Schmidt brings it in now. There's Dunbar. Underneath it goes to Rick Roth. His layup is good. And right away, relentlessly, Ferndale comes back out with a full court press. Rick Roth very first, nearly uh, steals all the night. He's got four. We had a cheerleader there, Chuck, in front of us playing soccer with a basketball. <laughs> She's all right. She'll hang in there. Oh, this seems, uh, seems kind of unique, I guess, being this uh, close to the floor, but really this is the way it was for uh, virtually every team not too many years ago. Yeah. Here's a three-pointer from outside, no good by Bobby Smith. Rebound by Rick Calla. He puts it in and out, no good. 
Finally, Lushko for the Jackets pulls it down. Lushko going coast to coast. Nice drop-off pass. But then the shot by Dunbar is stripped away, and Kanama Valley gets it back. Quickly up to Aaron Coleman, no good. Dressick on the boards for the Jackets. Ain't nobody playing a whole lot of defense here. Ferndale inside to Roth. Lushko pops another one up, no good, too strong. Rebound by Rakella. Valley now facing a token pressure, a one-man job by Lushko. We'll get it across the line. Lushko steals it. And he goes in for the easy layup as Lushko picks Bobby Smith's pocket. Double figures for Lushko. He's got 10. Sean Heinken gets it across the line for the Valley. Shot up court by Tullis is no good. Playground Rebound. basketball at its finest. Yes, sir. Rebound by Ferndale. Let's go the other way and get a shot. Dunbar in the right corner. Lesko at the right wing. Back to Dunbar in the corner. Drives the baseline near the wall. Puts it up no good. Ricala leaves it for Heinken underneath. Back outside to Brian Ricala. And Panama Valley comes the other way. This is Sean Heinken dribbling along the perimeter. Bounce pass. Tough one to catch. Smith contains it. Back to Sean Heinken. Inside the paint. Ends up in the hands of Bobby Smith, and he scores. Two points. This is a this is a team that Ferndale figures they ought to be beating. They tied it at 19. Other than that, they have been behind the whole way. 29-27. Here's a three-point attempt from outside. Right it down by Jeff Dunbar. Just like that, it is uh, it is not. It's a tie ball. In fact, it's a Ferndale lead for the first time tonight. First time all night, and again the full court pressure, and again Panama Valley will bust it. Rakala on the outside to Tullis, inside to Rakala, layup no good. Rakala gets his own boards, puts it up again, no good. The follow shot is good by Aaron Coleman. But just like that, Copeland puts the Blue Jays back into the lead, 31-30. Eight points by Coleman. Lushko outside. To Dunbar, underneath, nice pass. Kissed off the glass by Schmidt, and Ferndale regains the lead. That was a nice basket from uh, Schmidt. He has six. Bodies flying everywhere. The ball goes out of bounds, and it'll belong to Ferndale. Well, the cheerleaders, Conoma Valley cheerleaders down there in a danger zone. Sit here at your own risk. Here is Dunbar for the Jackets. Outside to Lushko. Conoma Valley. Trying to double team Lushko as he heads toward the paint, but it doesn't matter. He makes the basket anyway. Boy, he's got the moves, he's got the shot, uh, and he's got 12 points. Again, the pressure. Valley breaks it, but it's tapped away by Ferndale. So once again, the Jackets steal the ball on the full court press. Here comes Lushko, spinning around people between him. He draws the foul from Rakala. Scott, we have seen two basketball games so far. We've seen a basketball game with Panama Valley dominating in the first quarter, but it's been all Ferndale coming back strong and taking the lead here in the second quarter. 34-31, the Jackets lead by three. And back to the line will be Matt Lushko. Lushko with 10 points. And he has uh, made his last three in a row from the foul line. Now his last four. So he has four for five from the line. And he's got 11. Check it, he has got uh, 14. He makes the second one. So he's made five in a row from the line. Check it. He's made six in a row from the line. And again, the Jackets show that full court press. And here's where they cut it off, right at the pass. But Panama Valley gets it across. Rakala is tackled. No call there. Air ball underneath. Picked out of the air by Lushko. Bounce pass. Great bounce pass. Layup and a basket by Dressick. Boy, Dressick has had a strong second quarter. After scoring the three-pointer, he's picked up three more. And there is a though. charge coming the other way is Ebony Tullis. Good call. Down to a minute remaining in this second quarter. It's been a wild and early one. 38-31 for Neil by seven. And this is Dunbar with the ball on the floor. Out of bounds, and it'll come back to Panama Valley. 38-31, Yellow Jackets over the Blue Jays with 50 seconds remaining. Sean Heinkin into the right-hand corner. Brian Rakella is fouled. The 
Cala, as you can see, wearing that heavy brace on his left leg. Follows against Rick Roth for Ferndale. This is first. Both teams in the Appalachian Conference. Additionally, Ferndale playing uh, now in the Northern Cambria League. By the way, the uh, the JV game final score, Conoma Valley 80, Ferndale 49. Two for two from the line is Raquella. Now he's three for three. There you see Brian up close. Great athlete at Conoma Valley. Junior, six feet three. Makes them both. 13 points for Raquella. Let's go to the line for the Jackets. Down to 39 seconds. Counting Let's go from long bomb range. Not even close. Loose ball. Get a stick and kill it. It is finally pulled down by Conoma Valley. Raquella loses his footing, but he breaks it across the line. Outside shot, a near ball. Rebound, no good. Another rebound by Valley. Good block by Lushko. Who's going to shoot it this time? It'll be Tullis, and it's going to fall out of there. No good. Another rebound shot is good by Aaron Coleman. Scott, I don't know if it's just because we're real close, but I'm just seeing more intensity here than we've seen at a basketball game in a long time. Eyes are flying to the hoop, aren't they? Ten points for Aaron Coleman. We have a whistle. We're going to have a pushing foul against Scott Dressick. That goes against Scott Dressick. First foul of the ball game for Dressick. And it comes with two seconds remaining in this first half. 38-35, Ferndale over the Blue Jays. This will be Sean Heinken at the line for Connemaw Valley. Heinken will be shooting one and a bonus. First shot is good. That is one point in the ball game. Sometimes you can't hear yourself think. Or talk. Or talk. <laughs> Second one, gonna kick out no good. Rebound by Ferndale, shot at the buzzer, just thrown the length of the floor. And that'll end our first half, and it's been a good one. At the end of the half, it is Ferndale 38, Panama Valley 36. We'll be back with our halftime scoring summary right after this. Your pulse races, the adrenaline flows. There's no time to think. In a single second, our lives can plunge into chaos. Suddenly, there's an earthquake or a violent explosion. An airplane develops engine trouble. A tornado descends from the sky. When disaster strikes, human instinct takes over, leaving only the will to live. I'm Morris Jones for the Discovery Channel. Join me for survival. Tuesdays at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. We are back at Ferndale High School, our halftime score. The Yellow Jackets 38, the Conemaugh Valley Blue Jays 36. And Scott McLeod, uh, it really was a fun first half with, with two different games, all Conemaugh Valley first quarter and pretty much all uh, Ferndale second quarter. Yeah, but it's back and forth very quickly. One thing you know you're going to see when these two teams go at it is lots of offense. And that's what we're seeing here tonight. We're on our, our way to a, a total of about 150-odd points being scored if they can push it in the hole in the second half the same way they did in the first half. A reminder, next Friday night, same time, 7 o'clock, it's Johnstown Bishop McCourt playing the Trojans at the War Memorial here on Cablevision Channel 9. The Blue Jays have the ball as we begin the third quarter. This is Boren Kaltenbaugh. He will step back a pace and kick it off to his right and Sean Heinkin. Into the right corner, Coleman. Nearly stripped away from Tullis. Kicks it back out to Kaltenbaugh. It's a long time without a shot. We've won 20 seconds. Kaltenbaugh back outside. Sean Heinken inside the paint. Shot is put up in score by Ebony Tullis. Just as Ebony Tullis had a good uh, first quarter, then was pretty much silenced in the second quarter. He's back on the boards now, and he's in double figures with 10. Ferndale busts the press. Lushko goes coast to coast. Lusco is listed as uh, six foot one. He he plays taller than that, doesn't he? He does. And boy, is he quick. Ball batted out of bounds. It'll be inbounded by the Blue Jays. From side court, about 10 feet to the left of the scorer's table. Comes in the Kaltenbaugh. Ferndale playing their zone. 
Into the right-hand corner and Coleman. Tipped out of bounds and again Panama Valley will inbound from side court. Just Matt. underway third quarter. It's a 40-38 Ferndale lead. Matt Lushko with 16 already. Kaltenbaugh to the pivot and Tullis back to Kaltenbaugh. Into the right-hand corner, Coleman shoots, score. Coleman drives the baseline very nicely and puts it up from there. Aaron Coleman having a good game. He's got 12. Here's Dressick. Pops some long range, too strong. Rebound controlled by Roth. Rejection. This ball picked up by Lushko. He'll try. He is fouled on his head. And Matt Lushko will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, Lushko is leveled pretty well, and he will go to the line with 16 points. Over 1,000 career points already for Matt Lushko. He's only a junior, so you can assume that if he stays healthy, he's going to be a approach uh, 2,000 points for a career and that is just most unusual for a high school basketball player and look at him Scott he looks like he's going to grow a couple more inches yep. too. Ball was on Ebony Tullis by the way that's his third and he's in a bit of foul trouble now. Free throw by Lesko too strong no good it's a comebacker he'll try the second shot. 636 in his third quarter tie ball game at 40. Second one is up and this one also misses the mark. Rebound and another foul immediately as Dressick went up with a follow shot. Rice with a put back and he will go to the free throw line. Lushko uh, had made five in a row and missed the last two now. Second one on Warren Kaltenbach. The line will be Scott Dressick. This is a cable vision exclusive on Channel 9 presented under authority of the Ferndale Area School Board. And the use of the pictures and descriptions of this game without prior permission is prohibited. The announcers tonight were selected by and are being compensated by Cablevision Channel 9. First one by Dresick is good. He'll get the second try. Scott Dresick has played a good uh, game so far. He's a 6'2 junior. Second one also golden. 42-40. Ferndale leads by a deuce. 13 now for him. A steal by Dresick. Three-point attempt. No good. Rick Callow with the rebound for Connemaw Valley. Leaves it for Heinken across the timeline to Kaufenbaugh. Left wing now and Tullis pops it up over bodies too short. Battle for the rebound and the ball pops out to Dunbar and he'll slow it down, wait for his team to cross the line. So Lushko, his pass or shot, whatever, was batted down by Tullis. Second shot by Lushko is no good. Rebound by Valley, Rick Callow on the break. Will stop and Connemaw Valley will bring some more troops up. Rakala inside the paint goes strong to the hole and draws a foul. Well, these guys are physical, aren't they? They're not, they're not playing around out there. It's serious business. Foul is on Matt Lushko. And Lushko, that is his number two foul. Team's third here in the second half. And Brian Rakala will go to the line to shoot for Connemaw Valley. He is four for four from the line. Jinxed him. Missed this one. The noisy Ferndale area gym. Friday night basketball. Put them both the same place, about six inches too strong. Let's go. Nice underneath drop off pass, but the ball was off the hands of Dunbar and out of bounds. I think the pace has slowed just a bit here in this second half as compared with what we saw in the first 16 minutes of basketball. Here's this Ferndale press again, and again, they nearly steal it, but Heineken will pick up the loose ball. Go underneath the Coleman, spins too strong. Dressick with the bound for Ferndale. As a man all alone under the basket, now they kick it back out. Shots put up too strong. No good by Schmidt, and Panama Valley comes the other way. What's that about the pace? There's Coleman. In the corner now is Sean Heinken. Underneath to Rakala, who drives to the basket and scores. And Rakala having himself a night. He's got 15. Rackets across the line with Braun. This is Dunbar outside. Cross court. Three point attempt by Dressick. Write it down. That's Scott Dressick for three. That is uh, the angle Dressick likes to shoot from. That is his second tray of the night. And he's got 16 altogether. Valley does a nice job breaking the press, but then the pass goes off Aaron Coleman's hands. One kind of strong to him as he would have had an easy one, but it'll come back to the Jackets. It is 45-42, Ferndale by three. We are at the 440 mark here in the third period. And they have forgotten to start the clock. There it goes, 439 and ticking. 
Lushko, top shot, he draws another foul. So it'll go against Brian Rakella. Lushko shows a lot of motion, he has a lot of moves, and uh, as a result, he's gonna draw a lot of fouls. Spent a lot of time at the charity stripe, and I'm sure that's where he's racked up uh, several hundred of his thousand plus career points. Second one on Rakella, we are gonna have a timeout taken here. We'll take this break on Cablevision Channel 9 with the score, Ferndale 45 and Connemaw Valley 42. Coming through, coming through, we're coming through for you. Cable vision, the greater Johnstown, coming through for Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Coming through for you, cable vision, the greater We are back at Ferndale Area High School, 45-42. The Yellow Jackets over the Conema Valley Blue Jays, 434 remaining in this third, third quarter. It's been hot and heavy tonight. There's a little fan, came to the ball game to see maybe one of his cousins or brothers play. Intent on something else right now, though he can't bear to stand his free throwing by Matt Leshko. Matty will shoot two, first one's good. It is just uh, just unbelievable the number of points that Leshko has been able to rack up uh, uh, only being a junior. 17 of them tonight. Second to no good. Ferndale with the rebound. Follow shot is no good by Roth. And this time Raquel, they'll get it across the line to Coleman. Goes right to the hole. Layup. Great move by Aaron Coleman. And he is just a sophomore. 14 points for Aaron Coleman. Leshko now will always draw the double team. Gets a nice pass in for the layup by Dressing. Well done. Yeah, Scott Dressick's having a good night. Good second half. He's got 18. Again, Valley busts the pressure, and they'll end up with a three-on-one when they do that. They don't get to the basket quickly enough, but they get a foul by Rick Roth. Rick Roth commits the foul. And Rick Roth, uh, second foul of the night for the Yellow Jacket Jr. It was on Dressick. I lied. It was on Scott Dressick. I thought you were right, too. I said, it with, I said it with a lot of conviction. <laughs> Second foul on Dressick. Blue Jays will inbound from under the run. They're running out of seconds, and there goes the five. So Ferndale with the man on the inbounder denied the inbound pass, and Panama Valley got caught with a five-second count. Leading by four, the Jackets come back to the timeline. Let's go across the line to Dunbar. Underneath, nice pass. Layup by Schmidt is good. And Matt Schmidt, the big six foot four junior, with uh, eight points. Rakella across the line. He's going to go right to the hole himself. Offensive foul as Rakella charges, and he knocks Rick Roth to the ground. Boy, they could uh, they could issue an injury report at the end of this one tonight. We've seen a lot of guys getting banged around. Foul is on Brian Rakella. That is his third. Ferndale again across the line quickly. Shot from in the paint is no good by Schmidt. Follow shot by Rick Roth is no good, and we've got another foul. Game has slowed down considerably. More fouls here in the second half. It really was a, a quick moving first half, but we've had some fouling going on here lately. Gary Lupek of Connemaw Valley is going to call a timeout. And 
gather his team beside him. He's seen the lead by Ferndale increase to six points here. It was a two-point Ferndale lead at halftime. Now it's up to half a dozen. And it'll be the Ferndale cheerleaders on the floor. It was Panama Valley at the last time out. And people don't realize that the cheerleaders put in as much time practicing as the athletes and deserve a lot of credit as well, Chuck. Absolutely, they do put in a lot of time, not only for uh, the basketball games, other sports events, but uh, various uh, cheerleading competitions, which are proliferating. They really are. There's a whole bunch of them. So these girls, uh, when they get into cheerleading, they're involved in it on a year-round, heavy-duty basis. And you know, if you're the littlest cheerleader, you're the one that's going to get thrown around the most. You'll get popped off the ground and flipped in the air. That's right. That's, that's got to be scary being at the top of a pyramid. Yes. I wouldn't do it. I'd want to be maybe the second or third littlest. <laughs> Next Friday night, Johnstown at Bishop McCourt High School here on Channel 9. Tonight, a good one, Connemaw Valley and Ferndale. Connemaw Valley sends the fifth player on for a minute there. It looked like Ferndale was going to go on the power play. Talk about two, pl two teams that know each other and are used to each other, Johnstown and Bishop McCourt. That ought to be a great matchup. Yes, it should. Always is when those two teams get together. So to the foul line, Rick Roth for the Jackets. Roth with uh, four points in the first half. He's two for two from the line. Free throw is good. Roth will get the second three. try. Good look at Roth. Second shot is up and golden. And he is uh, not missed. He's four for four. Six all together. And again, the Ferndale full court press. Valley's done a better job this half. And they get it across the line this time to Raquella. Into the corner and Coleman back out. But a long outside shot by Heinken. That's a two pointer. And uh, that's three points. Ferndale quickly the other way. Roth. Outside to Dunbar. Cross court to Dressing. Ball stolen away by Aaron Coleman. Across the line is Kaltenbaugh. Raquella just inside the three-point stripe is good. Well, Raquella has played a good game uh, all together. 18 points tonight for Brian Raquella. Ferndale gets it across the line. It was a tough chore. Ten-footer is good by Rick Roth at the baseline. This team's putting a lot of points on the board in a hurry. That is eight points now for Rick Roth. And Valley gets it across the line to Raquella. The left corner is Tullis. Back out to Raquella. On the right wing to Cossenbaugh. In the right corner is Coleman. Stripped away and stolen by Scott Dressick. Biggest lead of the night for Ferndale. They lead 54-48 with 2.15 in the third quarter. Here is Lusco from outside. No good. Tip in too strong. No good. Rebound by Heinken. Outlet to Colton Baugh, across the line to Coleman into the right corner. To Raquella, back to Coleman in the corner. Raquella at the left, right wing, three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Fah, put back is no good. By Ebony Tullis, fight for the ball, and it's Raquella who keeps it alive. Good play. Heinken back outside to Brian Raquella, now to the right wing in Colton Baugh. This is Tullis inside the paint, tough shot, won't fall. Rebound by Ferndale, that is Rick Roth. Outlet to Lushko. Lushko, nice pass, layup, good by Dressing. So Lushko can not only shoot, he's a great passer. Yeah, Dressick uh, is having a good second half. He had the tray a couple of minutes ago, three field goals here in the second half. Well, he all breaks the press and immediately gets the layup from Aaron Coleman. Back and forth in your face, basketball. This is Dunbar. To Lushko. Lushko drives between bodies. Going to draw another foul. Who says basketball is not a contact sport, right? That's right. Wow, they're getting physical. They've been physical. Foul is on Sean Heinken. That's four on Heinken. First player in the game with four fouls is Heinken. A minute five remaining in this third quarter. 56 50. Ferndale with. Uh, Still with a six-point lead. Matt Lusko, the 6'1 junior, will shoot two shots at the free throw line. First one is up and good. You see Matty up close. 
a junior who already holds the all-time scoring record at Ferndale Area High School. And you see a gentleman with a lot of confidence in himself out there. Second one is also Made good. the first one, gets the second one, and Lushko with 19 points. Ferndale is up by eight, as Warren Kaltenbaugh brings it down court for Connemaw Valley. The outside to Bobby Smith. Now the ball is stolen away by Lushko. Here he comes. Great dish off again. Layup and a basket by Scott Dressing. Suddenly, Ferndale leads by 10. And Scott Dressick, 22 in the game. Bobby Smith. Recala. Move inside, no good. Loose ball kicked out of bounds. Last touched by Ferndale's Jeff Dunbar. Almost runs down to Ferndale Avenue and out the gym. This is Connemaw Valley now. Bobby Smith coming right to left. To the right wing in Colton Ball. Right hand corner, back out on the wing and now to Smith. Three pointer, write it down. Bobby Smith, the sophomore. Bobby Smith with a three pointer, he's got five. Down to six seconds and counting. Lushko won't be denied. He'll pop it up and he scores another three pointer. Well, Matt Lushko right says I can down. do that too. And he does, and Lushko. And with that, we come to the end of the third period. Trading trifectas, Panama Valley and Ferndale. So there's timeout on the floor with the score, Connemaw Valley down by 10. It's Ferndale 63, Valley 53. <laughs> Take to the skies. Watch Wings, Wednesdays and Saturdays at 9 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Welcome back to Ferndale High School. Ferndale 63, Connemaw Valley 53. With eight minutes of basketball remaining with the Zabalation Conference foes. Ferndale down by eight, nine points in that first quarter, but they've come back, they've tied it, they've gone up uh, 10 points here with eight minutes of basketball remaining. And we're all set for the fourth period. Ferndale got to pr protect that 10 point lead. And with two teams that can go up and down the floor and shoot three pointers like this, 10 points is not a big lead in the ball game. As we begin the fourth quarter, Matt Lushko controls the basketball. The 6'1 junior who owns all the Ferndale area scoring records goes right to the hole, misses. The ball on the rebound is tied up, and the arrow points the other way. And Lushko hurt himself on the way back down. Oh, he's he's right. no problem. He's handling it. He's back up court all right. Panama Valley gets the ball inbound. Ferndale sinks back in the zone. This is Kaltenbaugh leaving it off for Bobby Smith. Back out on top to Kaltenbaugh. Smith in the right wing. Kaltenbaugh on top. To the foul line, left pass, too strong for Tullis. He finally controls it to Ricala, puts it up and scores. It's played by Brian Ricala. That'll make the coaches scratch their heads. Brian Ricala has 20. Matt Lushko across the line for the Jackets. They clear out a zone for Lushko. He goes strong to the hole, gets knocked off his pins, and he'll go to the free throw line. They cleared out the left side that time and let Lushko go to the basket. Lushko is not afraid to drive to the basket. He's not afraid to uh, get in there amongst the other bodies. And when you have that, uh, that type of approach to the game, you've got to find yourself at the foul line often, and he does. Colton Baugh picks up his third foul, and Matt Lushko goes to the line. Bingo. Lushko gets the first one. 22 points, 23 points, Matt Lushko. He gets the second one. And after the made free throw, Ferndale back to their full court pressure. This is Heinken. Rickalla, nice job. Across to Smith. Bounce pass underneath is stolen by Dressing. Outlet to Lushko. Drops it in the hole. It's good. He can almost slam it at six foot one. Panama Valley breaks it the other way and gets an easy deuce as Ebony Tullis goes to the the basket. Ebony Tallis has 12. Jackets again coming down court. 
We play just over a minute of the fourth quarter. Ferndale leads by 10. Lushko outside. Two-pointer by Matt Lushko. Well, you can see why Lushko has the career points he does. He just seems to take personal responsibility of controlling this basketball game. Here comes Coleman. Underneath, Riccala. Shot won't fall. Rebound jackets. That's dressing. And this really is like playground basketball now. They're up court in a hurry both ways and racking up some points. Lushko talks to Coach Frank Haynes and brings the ball across the line for Ferndale. Ball from behind committed by Aaron Coleman as he reaches in on dressing. That is going to be number one on Aaron Coleman for the Blue Jays. So Dressick will go to the line. Dressick with 11 points in the first half. He has uh, scored that many here in the second half. He's got 22 altogether. You're watching Friday Night Basketball on Cablevision Channel 9. Next Friday night, it's Johnstown and Bishop McCourt. First Dressick. one by Dressick is good. That's a nice shot. 23 points for Dressick. Four. And here comes the press again. Heinken to Smith to Heinken. Across the line to Rakala. Good job. Tullis drives the baseline. Won't fall. Follow shot no good. Whistle on the rebound. Ferndale will have the ball and a second quick foul on Aaron Coleman, I believe. Well, well you want to watch be on super, Tullis. Super aggressive basketball. Two teams with a lot of intensity. This is the place to be. Two Appalachian Conference foes, the Blue Jays and the Yellow Jackets, with Ferndale now leading at 71 to 57. Next Friday night, it is Johnstown Bishop McCourt, a game that'll be played at the uh, War Memorial Arena. That was the fourth foul on Ebony Tullis, by the way, so he is in some danger. And uh, just keep following us throughout the winter months here on Cablevision Channel 9. We'll have the best in local scholastic basketball. We'll try to bring you your favorite team right here on Cablevision. And on WJAC Radio, we've got lots of scholastic basketball coming up. Well, we're right in the middle of the season, so a lot of conference games, and uh, you mentioned the Johnstown Bishop McCourt game next Friday. Both teams with injury problems. Uh, big guns on both teams uh, have gone down to uh, pretty much uh, season-ending injuries, but nevertheless, uh, that should be a good matchup. Always is when the Crushers and the Trojans go at it. This is Scott Dressick. To shoot one and a bonus. He is four for four from the line. There's number five in a row. And it, it's just amazing that uh, Ferndale was down by so much in that first quarter and then completely took over and dominated. Since then, there's a second one from Dressick, and they now lead it 73 to 57. So it is a 16 point. Ferndale lead, and again the full court pressure bothering Panama Valley. 26 points. Running Scott out Dressick. of seconds. There it is, a 10 second call. The Blue Jays unable to beat the 10 second call, get caught, and Ferndale will get it back. And Panama Valley is disintegrating. Lushko, again they clear out the left. He goes to Whoa. the hole, kisses it off the glass. How did he do that? What a shot. And once again, the full court press broken nicely this time up to Tullis. Underneath pass out of bounds, and it'll be Ferndale's ball. Matt Lushko in the first four minutes of the ball game had one point, Scott. At this point of the game, with five and a half minutes left, he's got 30. This is quite an athlete. Lushko again from the left side. Trifecta, no good. Rebound by Heinken. He looks up. The defense has dropped off, so he'll kick it across the line to Bobby Smith. Three-pointer off the mark, rebound by Lushko. Outlet pass to Dressick on the fast break, goes to the hole, off the glass and through the hoop. Doesn't get much better than that. Dressick and Lushko putting on quite a show. Dressick has 28. We have a whistle and another Conemaugh Valley timeout. Right now the score is Ferndale 77, Conemaugh 57. We'll be back after this on Cablevision Channel 9.
minutes of basketball remaining from Ferndale tonight. Yellow Jackets 77, Connemaw Valley 57, and it's been a wild game, but it's been all Ferndale here in the second half. How often do you see two high school basketball players on the same team score 30 points? Scott Dressick gets two more, and it'll be Mushko and Dressick both with 30. So Connemaw has the ball after the Ferndale called timeout, and this is Bobby Smith outside to Sean Heinken. Inside, out of bounds, it'll be Valley's ball back in again. Just under five minutes left in the ball game. And Conoma Valley's got, got to start bombing from three-point range. Kicked out of bounds by Dressick. This is Bobby Smith. They leave him alone, but he doesn't take it. Rakala will. Three-pointer, in and out. Rebound by Schmidt. To Matt Lushko, and here come the Yellow Jackets. They can be as patient as they want now, but so far patience has not been a strong point in this ballgame. Lushko's shot no good. Rebound by Valley. Out of bounds, it'll be Ferndale's ball back in. Crowd very much involved in this game, even though their Yellow Jackets have a comfortable 20-point lead. Ferndale will run it out of the stack. It comes into Lushko right back to the basket. Good. He loves to shoot that basketball, doesn't he? He's got 32. Another beauty, and again the full court pressure. Again, Valley running out of second, steal by Lushko. Schmidt, outside, shot, no good. Rebound, Schmidt, underneath pass, stolen by Valley. That was Heinken, outlet to Rakala. Across the timeline, he comes to Coleman. Pops it up from a dozen, no good. Rebound out of bounds off the wall. It'll be Conoma Valley's ball back in. Goran Kaltenbaugh back in for Conoma Valley and checking out Bobby Smith. Tullis spins, shoots, score. Good move by Tullis. Ebony Tullis in double figures with 14. Down to 345, and this is Matty Lushko across the line for the Jackets. Right corner and Dressick on the floor a couple times. Kicks it inside the paint. Tough pass stolen by Boren Kaltenbaugh. Up to Rakala. Rakala spin move to the basket. Offensive foul. Yeah, when you run into somebody standing still on a spin move, you're going to get nailed every time. And it really was a nice move, but uh, didn't work out. And the offensive foul is called, and the Yellow Jackets get it back. That is four on Rakala. Let's go across the line for Ferndale. Kicks it off to his left. Boy, they don't waste any time. Shot is no good. Rebound goes out of bounds. It'll be Valley's ball back in. That is really dangerous down on the floor. You know that? They're right. Yeah. They're right uh, just barely out of bounds. And that's a uh, sit at your own risk territory. Down pay there. attention to the game. Heinken. Rakala drives. Nice drive. Missed the shot. Rebound jump ball. The arrow favors Ferndale. Raquel really is aggressive underneath for the Blue Jays. Uh, Gary Lupek talked about him uh, when, when, when we discussed this Blue Jay team before the game, and he says uh, Raquel is a good ball player. Unfortunately, the Blue Jays having their problems this year in spite of some good individual talent. They are just two and seven. Matt hopped into the ball game for Valley, and here comes Ferndale. Dressick, batted out of his arms, goes up, shoots, and scores. Oh, he talked about Matt Lushko like uh, enjoying shooting that basketball. Uh, same situation, Scott Dressick, and there he is with 30. So you've got two players for Ferndale with 30. Tullis in the corner, out on top to Heinken. To Carlton Ball, bounce pass in the corner, out of bounds. We're down to 235 remaining. Ferndale 81, Connemaw Valley 59. Yellow Jackets just keep pouring it on. Jeff Dunbar out now and George Grove in for Ferndale. Here's Lesko, three-pointer air ball. Picked up by Rick Calla to Boren Kaltenbaugh outside to Heinken. Back on top to Kaltenbaugh, spins out of his hands. He gets it back again. Hopped in the corner, batted away by Lushko, and a foul on Matt Lushko. That'll be number three on Matt Lushko tonight. 
I am just so amazed with the fact that uh, Lushko and Dresick, they've been doing a lot of shooting, but they've got the points to show for it. They both have 30. This is Dudley in the ball game now for Ferndale. Two minutes, 10 seconds remaining. 22 point lead for the Yellow Jackets. And here's Kaufenbaugh into the corner. Kicks back out on top. This ball picked off by Dudley. Lushko, across the line, passes stolen away. Good steal by Tullis. A port to Sean Heimken and Lusco says no. Ferndale sending out a message here. I think they're uh, they're letting Panama Valley know that they can do whatever they want to do with them. And they're going to meet again uh, later on this season. Yellow Jackets after tonight will be five and six. The Blue Jays two and eight. Inbound to Tullis. Hop, batted away. This ball picked up by Dressick. They'll leave it for Matt Lusko, the 6'1 junior. They'll bring it across the line. Tries a difficult pass into Dressick, can't control it. Colton ball the other way with a loose ball. To his left and Riccardo through his hands and out of bounds. Mike Troyan in for the first time now for Ferndale. And Bobby Plish in for the first time for Panama Valley. Matt Lushko sits down, gets a good round of applause from the hometown folks. And well, he should. He had 30, 32 points tonight. Drove across the line for Ferndale. Good pass, difficult shot, goes in and out by Dressick, rebound by Valley. Outlet to Kaltenbaugh. In the right corner, Coleman. Back out to Colton Ball, but stolen by Ferndale. Drive into the hole for the layup is Scott Dressick. Scott Dressick is fun to watch too, isn't he? He's over 30 points tonight. He just loves to keep shooting that basketball. Coleman is fouled. As the coaches now will empty the benches, give everybody a chance. Yeah, we're down to just under a minute remaining. Comfortable 83-59 uh, lead for Ferndale. Yellow Jackets led at 38-36 at halftime. They upped the lead uh, 10 points, 63-53 at the end of the third quarter. So they just kept pouring it on all night long. That's another common foul. Ferndale was not over the limit, so Tonema Valley will inbound. This ball picked up by Ferndale. And an outlet pass goes astray, taken back by Valley. To Coleman, spins, pops it up short. Rebound by Ferndale. Kevin Brown touches it for the first time tonight. And he will leave it for Grove. Palming the ball, he turned it over. We have a couple guys on the floor so short that if there were a jump ball between them, the referee would have to drop the ball down rather than throwing it up. I mean, there's some little guys out there. <laughs> yeah, they really are. While they're uh, emptying the benches here in the last couple of minutes, we're down to 30 seconds. Dave Komet, pass in the lane, picked off by Ferndale. For the Jackets, Kevin Brown dribbles the length of the floor and travels, and it'll come back to Conoma Valley with 23 seconds remaining. Well, it's been fun on this Friday night from Ferndale. Hope you enjoyed our telecast on Cablevision Channel 9, the Yellow Jackets and the Blue Jays. Into the right-hand corner. Shot is no good. By Hop, rebound by the Jackets. They lost the basketball, stolen back by Hop. And we're gonna have a foul, and this one I believe will put Ferndale over the limit. Yeah, one and one try here, and then we will have nine seconds to tick off the clock. Crowd still making a lot of noise, even though this thing has been over for a while. Free throw, no good. Ferndale with the rebound. Here's Dudley as the seconds run down, and there's the horn. Our final score, 83-59, as Ferndale came back from an early disadvantage and put Panama Valley away by 24 points. We'll be back to the Ferndale gym with our final scoring summary after this break on Cablevision Channel 9. Advertising on cable pays. And advertising locally on Lifetime Television can help your business reach the highest concentration of women, 18 to 49. Women who represent real purchasing power. 
Lifetime Television's targeted environment provides quality entertainment and information programming, especially for women. What's on her mind is our business. Make it yours. To find out more about how your business can benefit from advertising on Lifetime Television, contact your local cable company. We are back at Ferndale, and it's all over. And what was a fun matchup tonight between the Ferndale Yellow Jackets and the Conemo Valley Blue Jays. Our final score, Ferndale 53, Conemo Valley 59. Let's take a look at who did what individually. What an impressive performance, both from Matt Lushko and from Scott Dressick for the Yellow Jackets. Lushko ending up with 32, Scott Dressick ending up with 32, and they really did rack up a lot of points, more than a couple of threes from both here in the second half of play tonight. Uh, Lushko and Dressick both with 32. Rick Roth had eight points for the Yellow Jackets. Matt Schmidt had eight. Jeff Dunbar with that one three-pointer in the second quarter. That's uh, That was his point total of the night. Nobody fouling out for the Ferndale Yellow Jackets. For Conema Valley, high point man was Brian Ricalla. He had 19 points tonight. Aaron Coleman with a good second half. He had 16. Ebony Tullis had 14 points tonight for the Blue Jays. Kelton Ball had two. Bobby Smith had five. Sean Heinken had three points and uh, nobody fouling out. A couple of players with four fouls for the Conemaugh Valley Blue Jays. So the Blue Jays continue to struggle. They are now uh, two and eight. Ferndale with uh, a team that looks better than a 500 team, but they had a good, uh, good individual performances tonight from Lushko and from Dressick, and they win the ball game 83 to 59. Our next Cablevision Channel 9 broadcast will be one week from tonight. It'll be Johnstown, Bishop McCord basketball. The Crushers and the Trojans, always fun when they get together. So join us for that one. Hope you enjoyed our broadcast here tonight. For Scott McLeod, I'm Chuck Bender. And for Cablevision Channel 9, good night from Ferndale Area High School. <laughs>